All right, guys, I realize I'm not actually a photography channel or one of those kind of channels, but I kind of want to do one of these kind of videos that you tend to see on those channels. It's one of those what's in my bag videos. So this is the bag that I have. OK, it is a, a over the shoulder bag, over the shoulder camera bag from Hakuba that I bought in Nagoya. For those who are wondering, Nagoya is uh, between Tokyo and Kyoto on the drive from Tokyo to Kyoto. You go past Mount Fuji, you'll get to the prefecture, I believe it's called of Aichi. And then in Aichi, there is the city of Nagoya. And that's where Nagoya Castle is, which is actually where I came across some ninjas. So what's in my bag? There's actually quite a lot of things that are in my bag, but first off, what I would normally have in my bag that is not in there right now is of course the camera that I'm using to record this video. I am using a Canon EOS RP, and for those who are wondering, it is essentially a Canon EOS R, except it's newer, it's cheaper, I guess there are maybe a handful of functions that are missing, I don't know, if you want to make that comparison, go ahead and check that out. But if you have the money for a Canon EOS R, which is around about 3000 bucks, then you should probably get that, but if you don't have that kind of money, or if you want to save some money, this camera is really really good. Now I also have the lens that is currently attached to this camera. This camera is right now using, or at least right now I am using, the 50mm 1.4, the 50mm f1.4 lens which is super duper useful. It just makes everything so much easier. Uh, I'm right now shooting at 1.4 aperture which is why the background is very very blurry and even some of the foreground is actually really really blurry. In fact this bag should be really really blurry. So this lens is really, really useful as well, but it's not the only lens that I have in this bag. Okay, I also have two other lenses. The first of which is this lens. This lens is a 24mm f2.8 lens. It's good for wide shots, so if I want to be outside and I want to take a, a shot of, say, a train station and I have to stand rather close to the train station, then this lens is a lot more useful than that lens over there. It's just simply that this lens is zoomed out a bit more, but because it's zoomed out a bit more, things tend to look a little bit more distorted. This is more in the case of like, if I'm indoors and I, I just can see like both walls, but I normally can't see both walls, that kind of thing. So there is a bit of distortion with this lens as opposed to that lens where things tend to not be as distorted. So tend to, I, I'll probably end up using that lens a lot more than this lens, but I do keep this around because it's still very, very useful. And then I also have this gigantic lens right here. This is the 75 to 300 zoom lens that I got right at the start when I got my first ever DSLR. That DSLR was an EOS 1100D, a simple cheapo camera that was so bad that it couldn't even shoot 1080p. That's how cheap it was. Bottom line is, this one is useful for events such as protests, because there seems to be a lot of protests these days in Sydney. I did just come across uh, an anti-abortion protest of all things, so I was able to use this zoom lens and really zoom in and get the speakers, as opposed to having to stand in front of them, so that's really, really useful. So this lens is good, but it's no it's no good in like dark settings, because the aperture starts at 4, which makes it really, really hard to use in low light. That's where the 50mm comes back in again. Uh, on the 50 mil, just real quick, I didn't get the 1.2 because that one cost 1,200 bucks. This one being the 1.4 only cost 500 bucks. It's plenty good. I don't think you really need to spend that extra 700 bucks. That's just me. Okay, moving on. Obviously, if you have the money, get that 1.2. Moving on, we have this power bank. This power bank is a power bank that I use specifically because it has power delivery. Power delivery is how I'm able to charge my camera from USB to USB. So if you're looking for a power bank, maybe look for one that has a USB out, a USB-C out rather. Uh, but you really need to look around for that label that says power delivery. This one says type C PD 18 watt max. This uh, has two benefits, the first of which is, again, being able to charge my camera, but also secondly, I can also use it to fast charge my phone if my phone has fast charging. My phone being an S9 has fast charging. Some iPhones have fast charging. Uh, S10 has fast charging. I think there are other phones that are not Samsung or iPhone that have fast charging. So this is really, really good on like multiple ways. And then in my bag, I also have a couple of pens. They're basically four color pens. Woo, that's about it. Okay, now. In this side, we also have some additional recording uh, accessories. For example, this microphone. This microphone is a Rode VideoMic Go microphone with a dead cat that I actually got for free. If you want to, if you want to learn about that story, just go and check out that video. The curious case of the free dead cat. Okay, and at the same time, I also have this light. This is a Godox 
LED 64 light. It is plenty bright for, I guess, rather close up things. It's really just a backup light in case, for whatever reason, the area is not bright enough, or for whatever reason, it's not bright enough that even an aperture of 1.4 can't light it up, you know? This is still quite useful. I just keep it in there. It runs on batteries, so it's really that portable. Uh, but at the same time, if you get yourself a, a, a DC uh, cord uh, from, say, JCAR or something, like you just get yourself a generic DC cord, you can actually plug this to the wall and you can use this forever. So that's how I'm able to use this. Sometimes, if I feel like I want to light myself up with the webcam, that's how I do that. Okay. Awesome. So that's this light right here. Now, the great thing about this light as well is that it has some cold shoe ports. Now, this is mainly so that you can attach multiple uh, copies of this light onto itself, and then you can eventually just blind everyone within a 50 mile radius. But instead, one of the cool things I could do is with this microphone and the cold shoe right here, I can actually just attach it to this light, and then I can, I don't necessarily have to have like, I don't necessarily have to hold this. I can just attach it like that and then put the plug in into my camera so that's really really good cool so that is the light and the and the microphone and of course I have a couple of spare batteries in the bag for the light awesome now in this section is a bunch of accessories for example we have a wired lapel mic this is a Rode wireless microphone oh not wireless this is a Rode wired microphone uh, it's useful for just talking in general because it doesn't have some of the problems that the Rode video mic has for example if they're too far away it does get a little bit noisy and this microphone is less sensitive to echo I find so this is very very good for when I'm just out and about but I do tend to use the uh, video mic go if I'm trying to like record other people okay we then have these pair, this pair of earphones, they're just really, really comfortable. That's basically it. It's useful for listening, uh, especially like mic checking on the camera if I have the mic go. So this is really, really good. Something that you should probably keep in mind when you're, whenever you're doing video, you should definitely have a pair of earphones around just so that you can hear what you have recorded or, and possibly hear as you're recording if you're not recording yourself. I also have this, it's an ND filter. An ND filter is essentially a pair of sunglasses for your, uh, for your lens. So, for example, things are nice and bright here. And with this ND, ND filter, things are no longer as bright. It's only useful for when you're outside because the whole, whole point is to be able to uh, use a low aperture while shooting someone, for example, so you can have a video of a subject with the background blurred. That is the point of having an ND filter. Among other things, of course. Uh, I actually have come back and bought myself a variable ND filter, so that one's a lot more useful than this one being an ND8. This ND8 is actually Canon's ND8, and I have since then gone ahead and bought this ND filter, a variable ND filter from Hoya, of all people. And the way this works is, if you can see sort of how it's sort of, sort of grey at the moment, but then if I turn it, it gets darker gets brighter, gets darker. That, and that's a variable ND filter. It's a lot more useful overall. The only problem is this one, I can't actually screw a lens cap onto it, whereas the ND8 filter, I can screw a lens cap onto it. So just keep that in mind whenever you're buying an ND, an ND filter. Uh, might be something you wanna keep an eye on because it's really just useful um, to be able to just stick your lens cap on top of the ND filter so that you don't have to switch and swap and do all that kind of stuff. All right, two things fell out of my bag. The first of which is a three-in-one USB card reader. This one's super duper useful. It's a lot better than those card readers that have a wire attached to them. I find that they fail real quick and they also don't seem to like my phone. This one seems to like my phone quite a lot because one side is a USB-C port. The other side is a USB regular, i.e. type A port. But then if you just press at the bottom of the type A port and then just sort of pull this out, you might not be able to see it, but this is a USB mini 
sorry, micro USB port. This is super duper good. It's just so useful for like all sorts of things, whether it be trying to figure out if my photos and or videos look any good on a bigger screen, or if for example, a client, I guess, uh, wants their photos immediately on their phone, then I can actually just give it to their phone, just immediately without hesitation. So that's really, really good. Uh, it takes micro USD, uh, micro SD rather, micro SD and SD cards. So my phone, uh, my camera uses an SD card. There are some cameras out there that use CFast cards. So unfortunately, this is not the thing for you. But when I was buying this in Japan, I bought this in Kyoto. When I bought this in Kyoto, there were other versions that were taking in CFast cards. Cool. And then I have this bubble, uh, bubble level thing. It's actually a three bubble level thing, which is kind of useful. It has a cold shoe port, so you could attach this either to your camera or like my microphone, I could attach this to my light. So I could just do that. I could do that and I would have it on top of my light and I could figure out what is level and what is not. But ever since I realized that my camera comes with a digital leveling sort of system, the kind of system that you would find on an airplane uh, at, at the pilot's desk, I actually don't use this anymore. So I just use the digital leveling thing instead. I find that a lot more, a lot more efficient to just use that instead of using this. And then finally we have the caps for the backs of both the lens and the front of the camera so if I were to take out the lens completely and not have anything on my camera then I would just be using this to be the caps that's just stock standard stuff. Uh, I have a spare battery as well which is currently charging that's really really useful and I have this is of course the wire for the video mic go. Cool! I believe that's all of that stuff and then finally just in the front we have a couple of random bits and pieces I have some business cards of all things which I don't seem to use all that much I have the label for this bag it's called the Luft design from Hakuba the brother's shoulder bag for a grand total of 3980 yen that comes out to around about $56 thereabouts Australian uh, and then I have three wires, the first of which is a USB to USB type C. This is useful for charging the power bank uh, with a wall plug or charging uh, my phone. Then I also have a USB to USB micro, actually micro USB. This is also useful for charging my earphones. And also having these two means that I can charge both my phone and my earphones at the same time uh, with the just the regular ports on my power bank. And then finally I have the big Type-C to Type-C, which is useful primarily for charging my phone. Uh, sorry, for charging my camera, and then of course also for fast charging my phone uh, via USB Type-C, because the USB-C port is of course the power delivery port. Unfortunately, the EOS RP is unable to connect to the camera via USB like that. You have to use the card reader or some card reader. Anyway, that's everything in my bag. Managed to get this down to 13 minutes as opposed to 27 last time, so that's really, really good. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more stuff. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.